Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be diving into the world of Windows XP tablet PCs for the first time on this channel in about two years. And we're going to be focusing specifically on the experience pack for XP tablet PC edition. Now this right here was released back in mid 2005 as a enhancement package to the operating system. Now if you've heard me say that line before, then you've probably seen one of my videos on my Microsoft Plus because the concept there is identical. In fact, you could say that this right here is the Microsoft Plus of XP Tablet PC Edition because it does essentially the same thing. But what makes this even better is it was released for completely free on Microsoft's website back in mid-2005. So yeah, pretty awesome. So to get started, we've got a USB drive right here with the installation file on it. We're going to pop it into one of the USB uh, ports here. And of course, the system will recognize it. So we're just going to get out of this here. And for those of you who uh, have no idea that XP Tablet PC Edition was even a thing, I do have a retrospective video that I made back in 2020 that goes into a little bit more detail on the operating system itself. If you want to get more information on that, you can check it out up here. But let's go ahead and open up the drive here. Now, a couple of prerequisites. You see, I got a couple more things on here. Well, a couple of these don't even relate to the video at all. But I do have uh, .NET Framework 1.1 and Windows Media Player 10 setup files on here as well. And that's because the experience pack requires them. Though I believe this tablet already has both of those installed. So we're going to try to run the experience pack uh, setup executable itself here. We'll double click on that and we'll see if it will install. So the initial setup is just finished here, but when you click on next, it's going to open up your launch program. And this right here is where you actually choose the components that you want to install. So if you only wanted, say, ink art, you could just tap on this here and click on the install button. We're, of course, going to get everything. So we'll click on install all, and it's gonna go through and install everything for us automatically which of course is really great and there we go we got it installed so this launch program here remains and it's one of the ways that you can get access to the programs and features you can also of course go to the start menu go to all programs and inside of here you've got a new program group and you've got five of the six uh, things that it adds in here of course, you have the Explore the Experience Pack, which will open this program up here. Now, the sixth thing that it adds that it was not in that list is the Energy Blue theme, which we can just click on Start here to open up the display properties. Now, this theme will look very familiar to any of you who have used Windows XP Media Center Edition because this is that theme. It's just called Energy Blue here instead of Media Center style. And the wallpaper is, of course, the lovely Energy Bliss wallpaper that was also in Media Center Edition. So it's just essentially bringing that theme over to XP Tablet PC, which I'm sure some people will say, like, who cares? But I, I find this pretty cool. I just like this theme. It's also worth noting this theme was eventually made available to every XP user who wanted it over on Microsoft's website. You just had to download a separate file and run through a Windows Genuine Advantage check to make sure you were running a, uh, a, a real copy of Windows. So yeah, that is our first item. And now we're going to get into one of the programs. In fact, the rest of these here are all programs. And we're going to start with Ink Art right here, which is not a Microsoft program. This is actually developed by a New Zealand based company called Ambient Design. And this is a drawing pad program. And so you've got your pencils and brushes and all that stuff down here. You got your color palette over here. You can select whatever color you want. Let's say a nice green there. And let's say I just wanna take this brush right here. We'll um, increase the width here, maybe to like 15%. And I can start writing here. So there you go. Simple as that. Yeah, it's uh, pretty neat. The um, handwriting, it's honestly not that terrible. I mean, I'm sure if you were actually using a drawing tablet, you would notice a difference. I personally have not used one before. Um, but, you know, it, it definitely keeps up with my, uh, with my presses pretty well there. There's not much of a delay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like I said, you wouldn't be buying this if all you wanted to do was use it as a drawing tablet, you just buy a drawing tablet. But I still think it's a pretty neat uh, addition to this. 
So we can maybe, let's go up here and make a new file. We'll do a new painting. We're not gonna save that, uh, though we will save the next one. So you can change the uh, width and height here, or you can just tap size to the screen. You can load a tracing paper if you want to, if you want to trace over something. And you can select which paper that it should use. So we'll go with the last option here. And let's go ahead and just start drawing here. And you can see that it, it does a really good job keeping up. I mean, it's not perfect, but it definitely keeps up with my position of the pen here pretty well. So there you go. There's definitely a minor delay. Maybe turn this pressure up here and there we go. So we can start drawing just all over here. We'll make this a nice abstract piece, something to really, uh, you know, get you, get you thinking about it as we, uh, as we go through here. And I think we're going to add a little bit of a uh, tension over here. So we're going to maybe make this a nice uh, red and we're going to just, you know, just kind of fill that in over here Maybe get some more water there. And yeah, that's kind of a nice, uh, thing, by the way, when you're using the, uh, watercolor brush here, you do have to tap the water cup to get more water every so often. So there you go. We'll add that up there and let's maybe get our uh, pencil and increase that. Maybe make this a nice uh, blue and then just kind of write M J D right in there. Circle that. And I think that right there, my friends is a masterpiece. So we're going to save this save painting as, and of course with XP tablet PC, all we got to do is uh, hover over the text box, press the little button and we get our uh, keyboard here. So we're going to just type out M J D dot ptg is the file extension that it will use now i believe you can export this as well if you want to yep export as image so let's say we want to make this so you got uh, bmp jpeg or png we'll go with bmp and here is the image that we just created isn't that awesome yeah so there you go next up is ink crossword you see you got a theme with this ink uh prefix going here you got it for three of the six applications so yeah ink crossword is a crossword puzzle amazing right uh it's actually pretty uh neat how this is done when i was doing some messing around with this off camera just uh you know it, it's definitely optimized for a touchscreen display as you would certainly want uh, and all these applications definitely are but i just think this is kind of neat so when you open it up here you get your pack selection right here and it comes with 12 puzzles right out of the gate and those are listed over here but you could download the daily puzzles of course that's not going to happen anymore because whatever server this is supposed to connect to uh does not exist anymore you know what we'll try it just to make sure i will connect to my uh to my home network here holy cow it actually still works what from left to right by mark millet okay was successfully downloaded okay so the date is set to 1 1 2003 so i assume it's pulling the puzzle from that date but still the fact that it's con like able to download it from the server the fact that the server still exists let's go ahead and change this to the uh, current date or at least a more recent date so we'll bump this up to let's say january 2021 you've already downloaded the daily crossword puzzle for today okay well let's maybe close out of it and open it back up yeah see this is a different one here good start was successfully downloaded let's actually set this to the current day so 2022 it is june 18th as i'm recording this universal freestyle 25 so i don't know where it's getting these from oh i guess there you go puzzle packs provided by infinite crosswords okay that site i guess is you know is still up but it's just neat that this program can still download god that's just really cool okay so we'll do this uh latest one here for today what i find neat about this is as you hover over the different numbers here you can see that the across and down columns here will move to that specified number number 43 some korean tv shows one two three four five six uh k-drama maybe uh now see this is the thing the handwriting recognition sometimes screws up it thinks that was an f although my handwriting is not anything to write home about so let's try k nope it looks like that's wrong some korean tv shows i have no idea but yeah when you write the correct letter 
it will turn black. So you see it's red right now, it's indicating that's the wrong letter. Uh, so let's just get rid of that here. And let's see if we can find one that I know uh, for sure. Number 14 across is uh, got out of bed. A-W-A-K-E, awake maybe? Let's, uh, yeah, see how it changed to black there? Now it thinks that's an N, so that's uh, just, it's not recognizing what I'm actually trying to write there. So we'll write a W. Um, okay, so it's not, is this an A here? Or is it just, nope. So it's not awake. This is one of those things where it's like, uh, once I realize what it is, I'll be like, oh, of course it is. But like in the moment, you're, I'm like going blank here. Got out of bed, awake, arise, arise maybe. Yeah, arise. Uh, and it's, <laughs> okay, so you can see it uh, put one there by mistake, or I guess I put one there by mistake. So, um, A-R-I, now I guess it thinks that's an L maybe? Or no, is it not a rise? But R and S, a rose? But no, that would still end in an E. Okay, well it is O, it thinks that's a J I think at the end. So, maybe let's try a capital E. It thinks that's an F because it didn't get that. It didn't get that right. Okay. Oh come on. It thinks that's a K. There it is. A rose. We got it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's gonna really mess up your time here with the fact that it's just it's not able to recognize. It's not perfect, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So if you wanted to, you could go through here and uh, mess around with that. But yeah, that's the crossword. And next up we've got Ink Desktop. This is the coolest program in here, at least to me, because what this does is allows you to take notes and write things right on your desktop without having to open up a separate program, you know, in a window. So right now it's this note here, right? But you can also just write over here if you want. But we're gonna go ahead and just go to this options menu here. We're going to go to settings and we're going to uh, just get out of it apparently. Let's go back here to settings. And you can change the template if you want. So right now it's set to memo, you can do like a calendar. Uh, you've also got a high resolution option, which for this uh, display resolution here is just going to go off the screen. So you can go through here and pick whatever template you want. Or what you can do is select faded or transparent. Now if we do faded here and we hit apply, you see that it will give us this, uh, this faded outline here. Now it will leave this room for the icons over here. It doesn't cover that, but you can change that if you go in here and you uh, go to full screen instead of full screen with room for icons. And that will then extend that faded uh, thing to the left edge of the screen, including the icons. So that means that yes, you can kind of just drag, uh, you don't wanna drag the icon there, but you can just doodle and stuff behind the icons. But my favorite is just to set this to transparent and we'll get out of that. And now it's just like your regular desktop background and you can just doodle on it and write whatever you want. So let's go ahead and just uh, get rid of all this stuff. So we'll just uh, go through here, just get rid of all this. And you can see the, the uh, eraser doesn't work like it does in paint, for example. It's not going to let you like erase, like say that I make one motion here. It's not gonna let you erase like this little portion down here. It goes by when you touch the pen to the display and then let go of it, or well, not let go of the pen, but you know what I mean. Uh, it, it just goes by motion. So this is one motion here. So if I go and even touch the bottom of it here with the eraser, it just gets rid of the entire thing. But if I were, say, writing an M here, and then I let go and go to write a J, and let's say I just want to get rid of the M, I can do that. I can get rid of the top of the J and maybe rewrite that, you know, like that. There you go. So that's how uh, the eraser works. But yeah, this is essentially the best way to describe this. It is the Windows Journal program just on your desktop because Windows Journal is this note-taking application. You can write your you know, notes up here. So we'll say, hello world. And you can just write whatever you want in here. But you know, if you wanted that on just your desktop, you don't wanna to have to go into a separate program. 
this is a really, really good program for that. Uh, the only thing that kind of is similar is the Sticky Notes program, which is just essentially a smaller Windows journal where, yeah, you can have this kind of widget thing floating over here and you can write your notes in there. The only major downside of this is there's no real way of saving any of the things that you uh, that you write on here. Uh, so if you wanted to actually write something down and save it, you'd want to use the Windows Journal. But if you're just talking about writing like a quick note to yourself, like say maybe I want to do a little to-do list here and I want to make a video, we can just write that there. And then it'll just be there on my desktop until I've finished it. And then once I do that, I can just erase it uh, here. Or I can go up here to the X here, which will just erase everything from the desktop. So that is the only downside. There's no saving, uh, but I still think it's a really, really neat idea. So let's go ahead and move on to, let's go back in here and open up the experience pack launcher again to media transfer. Now, unfortunately, this is the only program in here that I could not get set up and working properly. Now this makes use of another Windows component known as Media Connect, which is a universal plug and play media server that was later integrated into Windows Media Player itself. And it allowed you to set up a server computer like your desktop machine, for example, and uh, access that from a client machine like this tablet right here and download files or even stream video files or I think it was just originally um, audio files to your tablet PC or to whatever other device that you were accessing that server computer from. So the streaming files is what makes this special but honestly if you wanted to copy something from your desktop to your tablet or your laptop you could just use a USB stick and just copy it or set up a network share on your desktop and then access it from here. Yeah, you could do that. That's honestly what I would do, but this does provide a nice front end for all of that. But yeah, that's media transfer, a little description of it at least. And last but not least is snipping tool. Now, if you use Windows, you're probably pretty familiar with this program. I use it all the time to capture screenshots and things like that to post on Twitter and whatnot. But Tablet PC Edition is actually the very first Windows version to include a snipping tool or what was previously called the clipping tool. Now it was not released with the original version of XP Tablet PC, but it was actually an XP Tablet PC power toy. And yeah, that's right, there were power toys for XP Tablet PC Edition specifically, in addition to the XP Power Toys and the 95 Power Toys that we've talked about on this channel before. So one of those was the clipping tool, which later became the snipping tool, and then was later just bundled with Windows by default, beginning with Windows Vista. So we'll go ahead and launch it here, and you see it will gray out the entire screen. And then I can go here and let's say I wanna select a, uh, a rectangle snipping, so I'll do that. And then I can just draw with my uh, tablet pen here. You can see there's much more of a delay there as I uh, as I select the, the snip selection that I want. And then I just let go. And then I uh, click on the send to button right here. We'll save that as a file. And then let's call it just capture one. And there is this dot snip file extension that it utilizes, but you could change it to a, to a dot JPEG or I guess a bitmap because that's what we selected there. And we'll save that to the desktop. And now we can open this up and there you go. What you can also do is select the freeform snipping option right here and just kind of draw all crazy around here. You want to make like zigzags or whatever. You can do that and we'll just uh, bring this around here. And there we go. And you can also add markup to this if you want. So let's say I want to maybe highlight something, maybe this right here because I think it's very important. So we'll highlight that. We'll uh, take a blue pen and we'll write MJD on the blue background because that totally works. When we take a red pen and write uh, the word hello, maybe everybody. There you go. And then we can of course save that. We will save this as a dot snip, that's fine. And when you save it as a dot snip, you can open it up in the snipping tool editor right here. And you can even make more edits to it if you want. I think you can erase stuff as well if you wanna get rid of the, um, the, the highlighting, for example. Yeah, there you go, you can get rid of that. I can, uh, I can scroll down here and maybe get rid of my hello everybody. 
and then yeah, you can save that. And so you can even make edits to it after you've already created the snip. So yeah, there it is, guys. That's all there is to it. That is the Windows XP Tablet PC Experience Pack. I thought this would make a nice little video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, notifications, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.